Welcome. In a previous video, I talked about setting up an encrypted folder on a Synology NAS, and I'll put a link in the description in my Synology playlist, and you can find that video there. I'll also put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to talk about accessing this encrypted folder on your desktop. So I'm in the control panel. I have the encrypted folder here. It's currently unlocked. So if I go on my desktop, and I'm on a Mac, but on a PC it's similar, I'll go to connect to server, and I'll type smb colon slash slash in the name of my server. So I'll connect up, and you'll see I have encrypted folder here, and I'll hit OK. So inside that we have the image that I stored. Okay. And being that I'm on a modern Mac, and if you're on like a modern Windows 10 PC, um, this is likely encrypted already. But um, there could be a possibility that you're using an older, older protocol or something like that. So you can modify that. So I'll go to my home on my control panel. I'll go into file services. And I have SMB enabled. I want to keep that. I don't have AFP enabled. I don't really use that anymore, it's kind of deprecated. And I use NFS for some things, but we want to focus on SMB here. And if we click on advanced settings, we'll see here it says transport encryption mode auto. So if your client supports SMB3, you're gonna have the encryption, things like that, but it could fall back to an older version for different reasons. So if we click on this, we can say force. It says selecting this option will cause clients that do not support transport encryption to be unable to use Windows file service. Opportunistic locking will also be disabled. Please refer to help for more information. I'll click yes. So while I did this, I want to tell you, ahead of time I checked my time machine wasn't running while I was doing this because it would have knocked it offline because it is not compatible with time machine. So, so if you're on a modern Mac and you use time machine with this, um, you probably would not want to force this. And hopefully it doesn't get exploited um, and you don't have people hacking into your SMB streams but you have to assess your own risk. I can't do that for you. So if we hit apply here, it says network service will restart when the settings are applied. Are you sure you want to continue? I'll click yes, and now I'll close this. So now if I go back, connect to server, and open up this share, we'll see the encrypted folder, I'll hit okay. And here it's connected, encrypted folder. So I can open up a terminal. I can type in smbutil statshares a. I need to make this a little smaller. And it tells here our server name is DS918, user ID is 501, and here it says SMB version is 3.02, and you can see all the other thing here, uh, encryption supported, encryption required, etc. So we know we're using an encrypted share there. So if you're on Windows, you don't have to worry about this time machine problem. That's just a Mac thing. But um, if you force it to SMB3, there may be some old clients that won't be able to connect to it. But that's if you're trying to be secure, you don't really want to use, you know, I don't know, Windows 3.1 or whatever. <laughs> so um, another thing you can do is if you just need to grab a file real quick, as long as you have the little lock icon here and you know that's secure. This is using a self-signed certificate right now, but I know it's good. So you can just go into your file station and then open up the encrypted folder here and drag and drop files back and forth here. That's another way to do it. But if you wanna use SMB and you wanna be sure that that is encrypted, then you want to change that to force encryption. So I do use Time Machine, so I don't want this um, turned on all the time. So I'll unmount that share, unmount this share. I'll go back into my control panel. I'll click on file services. I'll go into my advanced settings and I'm going to change this back to auto. And then I need to make sure I enable opportunistic locking and enable SMB2 lease. And those are two things that need to be enabled for Time Machine to work. And I'll hit apply. And if, if your Time Machine still doesn't work, you may need to like reboot your computer or something. But uh, that should cover it. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.